What determines the buying power of the currency? How does it stabilize and what's required to stabilize it? So I, if I would buy some bitcoins, who can manipulate the value of that? Um, everyone. <laughs> the buying power of Bitcoin is determined in exactly the same way that the buying power of the euro, the British sterling, the Japanese yen, or the U.S. dollar is determined through market forces of supply and demand in international liquid markets that operate around the clock. One of the fundamental differences is that Bitcoin trading never ceases. It has been going continuously for seven years. The network never stops. Every ten minutes, Bitcoin's heart beats, and transactions are processed. The exchanges never close. There is no closing price for Bitcoin. It is a rolling average. And in that trading, a market capitalization of approximately $12 billion is now traded internationally. What is $12 billion for a global currency? It's a guppy, swimming in shark-infested waters. <laughs> and every trader, every whale goes in there and just kicks that price around. So right now, the experience of living on Bitcoin, which I have been doing full time for more than three years, is a roller coaster. It's an absolute roller coaster. I've seen shifts of 20 or 30 percent in a day. And yet, if you look at the long-term trend, volume goes up, transactions go up, and volatility keeps dropping. And the beauty of it is. I can't sell that to an American. I can't sell that to a Brit. I don't need to sell it to an Argentinian. I don't need to sell it to a Brazilian. I don't need to sell it to a Venezuelan. I went to a conference and an Argentinian told me, I'm not worried about volatility. Our currency has volatility like this. Bitcoin has volatility like this. I'd rather be going in that direction. And you don't need to tell them why. Their government threw people out of airplanes not more than 35 years ago for disagreeing. They already know why the separation of state and money is a good idea. And so volatility is relative. 